How's it going everybody? I'm going to talk about Victory Road here. I know in my last video I said that for the last several weeks I was seriously considering boycotting this pay-per-view, but the card did look decent enough on paper. You know, I thought there were some potentially good matches on there, some potentially good things that could come out of it. So I rolled the dice, I gave it a shot, and now I wish I had my money back. I'm not going to say it was as bad as Destination X, but it was definitely not a good pay-per-view. And for the record, if you missed it for whatever reason, I do not recommend the replay at all. Save your money, buy a tank of gas or something. I think the biggest problem with Victory Road, despite the fact that there were no standout matches, is just how predictable the whole thing was. Going in, everybody knew it was going to be a clean sweep for the Main Event Mafia. It wasn't even a question, and we have seen the Main Event Mafia dominate for the last nine months. It stopped being interesting a long time ago. I mean, really, the only good thing about the Mafia dominating so much is that I wasn't too worried that the writers would put Sting over Samoa Joe. And it was one of the few good things about this pay-per-view, actually. I, I pretty much expected Sting to kick Joe's ass, only to have Taz come out and cause some interference and help Joe get the victory. But instead, Joe looked strong. Sting did have him in the death lock, but then Taz comes out, and he doesn't do anything. He doesn't get involved. But the presence of Taz flips a switch in Joe, and Joe suddenly turns into a monster and makes Sting tap out. You know, they should have made a bigger deal out of Sting tapping out, but otherwise I liked how they did this. The match was not as good as their Bound for Glory match because Sting has really diminished a lot in the last year, but it wasn't bad. Overall, I liked this segment. Um, I also liked the women's title match. I think it was a, a pretty solid effort from both women. Uh, Tara and Angelina had worked two matches prior to this. The first one was very disappointing. The second one was decent at best. This one was a big improvement, if for no other reason than the booking was a lot better. Um, they got more time to work, there was less interference, and the result was a better match. Imagine that. Having said that, <coughs> uh, I don't think Tara and Angelina work particularly well together. They've had three matches, and none of them have been really impressive. I mean, I would call this match good, but not great. And that's a problem that I'm still having with Tara. So far, her matches have been decent to solid, but not spectacular. And nothing that's even come close to Sarah Stock cheerleader Melissa last Thursday. Now, granted, she hasn't worked with the best wrestlers yet, and I think that when she does, she'll step it up a little bit. But before that can happen, she's got to get out of this feud with the beautiful people, and it doesn't look like that's happening just yet. Um, I'll give them this. The finish was very surprising, in a good way. Um, it's actually the only really surprising thing on this whole pay-per-view. Um, I, I did not expect Angelina to win the title back at all, and I was, I was going to say that she never should have lost it in the first place, because ordinarily I don't, I don't like frequent title changes. But I think this all worked out perfectly. Um, Tara looks strong, she gains sympathy with the fans because she was robbed of the title she just won, but Angelina still goes over. Everybody wins. And I know some people are probably going to crap on this, and say, you know, why give her the title in the first place if you were just going to take it off her ten days later, Tara was orton blah, blah, blah. But trust me, Tara gained a much bigger victory here with all those crowd pops she was getting. I mean, this was easily the most over she's been yet in TNA, probably the most over she's been since she was the psycho stuck in Trish Stratus. Was she screwed over? Yeah. That's the whole point. Now the fans have a reason to rally behind her. I mean, they were into everything she did, and they popped, they, they popped big when she super kicked Slick Johnson. You know, as the saying goes, you don't have to go over to get over. And this was, that was the most important thing here, that Tara gets over like a top baby face needs to be. So I thought this was all very well done. I only wish I could say the same about the rest of this pay-per-view. Charmel versus Jenna Maraska. Really? What is there to say about this? It was a joke. It was the god-awful shit fest that we all knew it was going to be. Normally, I wear these shades to protect my eyeballs from seeing harmful and disturbing things. This week, the purpose of the shades is to cover two unsightly wounds. Because after watching this debacle, I was struck by an overwhelming desire to stab my eyes out. Somehow, some way, they actually figured out how to make this thing worse than my worst expectations. Going in, I figured best case scenario would be a 60 second catfight, Maraska goes over, Charmel and Bolt beat her down, Awesome Kong gets in the ring, destroys all three of these idiots, and the whole thing lasts about three minutes. But that's not what happened, unfortunately, because for some reason, for some reason, 
The writers thought it would be a good idea to make this an actual wrestling match and give it more time than they gave Sarah Stock and cheerleader Melissa last Thursday, and the result was so horrible, I swear my eyes started bleeding as I watched it. The entire X Division roster was kept off the Victory Road card, but this, this trash, you give 10 minutes. Unbelievable. And once you get past that garbage, there was a bunch of stuff that, while it didn't really stand out, at least it didn't make me want to slit my wrists. Abyss versus Stevie Richards, like I said, I didn't see any reason to do this match, at least not on pay-per-view. It just seemed pointless. It was basically a 10-minute squash. Nothing that interesting about it. Uh, Matt Morgan versus Christopher Daniels was pretty good. Not a match of the year candidate or anything, but it wasn't bad. You know, probably one of Matt Morgan's better matches. Of course, it's not hard to have a good match with Christopher Daniels. And 3D British Invasion, same thing. Nothing really stand out here, but it wasn't terrible. You know, Brutus Magnus is getting better. AJ Styles versus Kevin Nash. <sighs> AJ tried. God bless him. He really tried. But we know what we're going to get with Kevin Nash. At the, at the very least, they tried to get over the fact that AJ was winning the match until Nash caught him, used his veteran instincts or whatever to outsmart AJ. But I have a question about that. AJ Styles is like a 10-year pro in the business. So how come he doesn't have any veteran instincts? You know, I, I see what they were trying to do here, but AJ Styles getting jobbed out to a guy like Kevin Nash under any circumstances is complete bullshit. It's a joke. Plain and simple. By that same token, Beer Money versus Steiner and Booker T. It was good when Storm and Rude were on the offense. But there's only so much you can do with Scott Steiner and Booker T at this point. You know, Steiner did what he always does, and Booker T... I, I, I know that Booker T is still capable of having good matches, because he proves it every once in a while, like when he wrestles AJ. But the guy is just not motivated anymore. He does not bust his ass in the ring anymore, and it is obvious! The best thing you can say about this is that beer money didn't get completely squashed. Kurt Angle versus Mick Foley. You know, you, you can say whatever you want. It's two veterans, two legends in the business. Um, someone said it was their first ever singles match. I don't know if that's true. But none of that means anything if the match does not deliver, and it didn't. I appreciate Kurt Angle's effort. I know he was working with a groin injury, so I'm not going to crap on this. You know, kudos to, to Angle for gutting it out. But bottom line, the match was not an acceptable pay-per-view main event. And Victory Road was not an acceptable pay-per-view, in my opinion. No standout matches, no X Division, insulting garbage that they tried to pass off as a women's match. Overall, three hours of my life and $30 of my money that I will never get back. And you know what the really sad part about this is? <clears throat> Last night, I was in such a bad mood that I was actually looking forward to Raw, just for something different, you know? And what did I see on Raw? I saw no less than five promising young talents getting destroyed by the Big Show. I saw Brian Kendrick getting jobbed out to Jerry Lawler. I saw Chris Jericho getting laid out by Mark Henry. And I saw Chavo Guerrero jobbing to Hornswoggle for the umpteenth time. That was two more hours of my life that I'll never get back. So you know what? Fuck all this shit. I'm going to go watch Ring of Honor.